It is December 15th, 2022, and you're watching The Code Report. After what felt like a lifetime of waiting, Svelte Kit officially hit version 1.0 yesterday, which is a full-stack framework for the world's most loved UI library. When I tried Svelte for the first time over three years ago, it left me extremely titillated. It had an innovative compiler, elegant reactivity, and we just had so much fun together. As the years went on, I continued working with React and Angular, but truth be told, I would often close my eyes and pretend that they were actually Svelte. I was web developmentally frustrated, but luckily, just in time for Christmas, we've achieved a glorious climax that makes it possible to use Svelte in a server-rendered application. Let's take a look at some code and see if it lives up to all of these innuendos. Svelte Kit is very similar to other JavaScript meta frameworks like Next.js, Remix, and Nuxt. Like Next.js 13, it uses file system routing, but made a somewhat controversial controversial decision of using reserved names to represent different types of UI, like page, layout, loading, and error. In addition, any file that has significance to the framework is prefixed with a plus sign. There's been a lot of discussion around this approach, and not everybody likes it, because you end up with tons of files in the project with the exact same name, which can lead to migraines if you expand all the directories in your editor. On the other hand, though, these conventions keep your project clear and consistent. Page.svelte contains a component that will be server-rendered when you navigate to that route. After the the initial page load, it will hydrate, and then the client-side router takes over from there. This is what we call SSR, and I think it's the most sensible default. However, in Svelte Kit, you can mix and match other rendering strategies, like you can pre-render static HTML for Jamstack-style websites, or if no server is required, you can use client rendering to do everything in the browser. Or on the flip side, if you don't want any JavaScript at all, you can render everything on the server like a traditional multi-page application. What's awesome, though, is that you can choose the best rendering strategy for a page with a simple configuration option. You're not locked into just one rendering paradigm. That's awesome, but the other big thing you'll want to know about the developer experience is how data fetching works. Every page.svelte file can have a matching page.js or ts file that exports a load function. The return value from this function will automatically be made available in the page svelte file via this data variable. It's incredibly simple and also provides end-to-end -end type safety. The load function can run both server-side and client-side. However, if you want to limit it to just the server, you can do that by adding server to the file name. And speaking of server, I love SvelteKit's convention for building APIs. You create a server.js file, then export functions named as HTTP verbs like git, post, patch, and so on. That's nice, but here's where things get really cool. In many applications, you need to fetch data at multiple levels. Levels. Like you might have user data at the root, then a dashboard with an order, then some comments below it. Fetching all this data is complex, and people have come up with all kinds of complex state management libraries that try to wrangle the complexity. In Svelte Kit, you can do nested routing with layouts that can share UI with their children, and also fetch data that's accessible by the children. But what's special about Svelte is that it has built-in stores. The page store gives you access to all the data on the current page, and can be subscribed to with reactive updates from anywhere in the application by putting a dollar sign in front of it. Angular has actually been doing stuff like this for years with its async pipe, and I can tell you from experience that patterns like this eliminate tons of complexity when it comes to state management. Now, it's also important to know that when fetching data, you can have error and loading files that represent the UI for those special states. This pattern is basically identical to Next.js version 13. In addition, Svelte Kit has form actions, which allow you to define functions on the server that handle form submissions. At this point, pretty much every modern framework has stolen this feature from Remix, which itself got the idea from the way every other PHP framework has worked since the beginning of time. And another piece of bonus news is that Svelte Kit is also getting a library very similar to Next Auth for user authentication. Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte and Svelte Kit, works at Vercel, and the team from Next Auth developed this library, which is awesome because that means it's getting world-class tools proven to work at the largest scale. Overall, Svelte Kit is a genre-defining masterpiece. If you want to penetrate deeper into this topic, stay tuned for a full uncensored tutorial tutorial on Beyond Fireship. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.